Hello everybody, welcome along to another edition of the Riverwide Ball. Um, it's looming, isn't it? The whole Omicron situation. And I just hope and pray for so many people. I don't know, being a bit selfish. The support isn't curtailed. I don't think we could handle it, a lot of us. Um, but anyway, um, the remaining Cork County final takes place on Friday night. You'll be glad to know. That means 16 of them have been completed. And compared to this time last year, when the shutters came down, finals called off, and in some stages, some competitions hadn't even started. And they all had to be completed before the 2021 version happened. So, And it was unsatisfactory, no doubt. But thankfully, uh, that is, you know, things are so much better from that point of view. So the remaining county final is Dripsy from Mid Cork taking on Randall Oak from Ballinacarrig in the County Junior B Football Divisional Final. And uh, I think Dripsy will be the, the favourites here. But for Randall Oak has been an incredible year. They, they appeared in three county finals. They won the Junior B Football Championship, which was just for the Junior B clubs. They were beaten last weekend by Belgoli in the Junior B Hurling Divisional Final. Uh, and well done to Belgoli, it means that they have two county championships and certainly we will be watching the progress as to how they will get on in the higher echelons. You know, they share a parish with Belly Martle. I'm not too sure of the sharing arrangements, but they have fabulous facilities on the Belgoli side of things. There's the one national school there, uh, it's, it's the, and it's based in Belgoli actually. There's the one underage club fee for both. But whatever, you know, like it was only formed in 1972, the Belgooley Club. And, you know, it's still operating at Junior B level. That in itself, nothing wrong with that maybe. But I do think now with the population base over there, that the time has come for them to move on and make an impression. They have the returning the wire from brothers who are from Belgooley, played for Belly Martin, won all islands with them. But they also have a nice mix of youth. Uh, in their side, so I think it's pretty exciting times for them. But anyway, that's the tune to be out of the way, or the, 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 the last county final out of the way. And I think it was over 10 days ago now when the Cork County Board issued a, a roadmap for 2021. It covers everything from when the Cork teams will be playing, when club teams will be playing in, the, in their county leagues, when the championships will begin, and it goes right up. And there is even a, a 2023 entry in it. Fingers crossed we'd be there for that. And as I say, like this is uh, for every club. The only problem, it now places huge pressure on the divisions who look after the affairs of junior A clubs. I would strongly argue at this stage that junior B and junior C clubs are better catered for because they play in all county competitions operated by the county board. I'm not saying they don't benefit from being involved in the divisions, but like you, one division that has, is it 22 junior, 22 or 23 junior A teams, like not on, and that day is gone. You know, like uh, competitions anymore can't have any more than 16 or I think max, maybe 12 is what they've got here in Cork for a lot of them and it's been very successful. But I just think that um, there are no huge uh, challenges for the divisions, for their officers. And I know they're operating on a courtly voluntary basis. I know that the county board have paid personnel driving the operation as well as voluntary contribution. But like I think junior A clubs, uh, they have to be catered for in the same the standards have been set and they deserve that. Um, I think I use the word discrimination uh, at some stage last year, I nearly got my head blown off of it. But the, the point I was trying to make is that I think a junior A teams have to have structures in place. Like if you ask any uh, player now that's playing for any of the teams that, any club team that's in the car competition, if all goes to well, if all goes well, they can tell you when they'll be playing leagues and they can tell you when they'll be playing championships. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's a big challenge for the division, no doubt about that. Moving on to the next section. Uh, somebody, somebody opened the door there. Um, before we talk about this weekend in Munster Club Championship, and more than last weekend, and um, we treat the court teams playing, and the big disappointment was the performance by Middleton, no point in saying otherwise it continues. 
um, a stretch going back a long time where the Munster Senior Club Championship champions are not quoted at Munster level. I think in time that's going to change. Um, but it was disappointing. Kilmallock were well, well over them. Two court teams did win at the weekend, and that, that was Corsi Rovers and Belly Giblin Barry. Corsi Rovers now will play. The Munster Intermediate Final details have been sorted out for that one. They're going to be playing on Sunday, the 9th of January, in uh, Port Nagail against Kilmoyley, the Kerry champions. And in case anybody's under any illusion as to what Kilmoyley bring to this party, they're after winning their two games in the Munster Championship already, winning them well. John Moyle was in charge of them. And Corsi Rovers won't need to be reminded of the last time that they were left out in Munster Club Championship in 2011. They were beaten by uh, Belly Duff and Kerry. John Moyle was training horses then. Uh, so that's going to be a big one. Uh, the, the Belly Giblin's victory, they got over the line and they're going to be playing near neighbours some Tipperary at Krokos Skinnerinke. Um, I think these two clubs know each other very well. The majority of them, uh, the players would have gone to the one secondary school I'm informed in Mitchestown CBS, where the legend that is Willie Duggan is attached to the teaching staff. Willie is so we will know from He's from Kildare and what work he's done in promoting games. He's an unusual, pleasant gas man. And uh, I think Willie should be asked to present the cup to the winning captain. That final, which was going to be played uh, Sunday the 9th of January in, in, um, in Maddow. Moving to this weekend, the three court teams in Munster Championship. I'd expect St. Finbars to be too good for Aero Guinness. That game is on in Park Arena on Sunday. Hopefully we'll be there. Um, at 1.30, uh, no doubt we're expecting the Bears to win that one. No, that doesn't mean... But that was a kind of a flipping combat. Uh, clear teams always bring so much to this, particularly the West Clare. I, I don't know anything about this clear team. So I'd better start doing a bit of research. But uh, it would be a major disappointment, let's put it like this. Let's put it like that, if, if, if Sam Finn Bears didn't win. The intermediate football and... My God, what a day this is going to be for no market after their incredible win in the Cork County Championship. How many times were they nearly shown the door and they still won it? It was a massive, massive win for them. Last time they did it was, I think it was 10 years ago. They take on Corofin in Mallow on Sunday at 1.30. Um, look, because they're a Cork team, we've a tendency to think that they are going to win. But, um, you know, I, I think this could be a bit of a challenge for them. But they face challenges, Newcastle, or Newcastle to say, a new market, uh, and you know, I think uh, this is a great opportunity for them to get to a final. I expect Nagail from Kerry not alone to get to the final, but probably to contest the All Ireland. Um, they're a really good team. And uh, when, I, when I talk to you know, about um, Oher Bui, our Cox Junior representatives, and they're playing Guinea Guile in the Munster semi final, that game goes on in Mallow. What a venue! Um, on Saturday at 1 30. Their neighbours, uh, Guinea Guilla, Renise Kerry and Borbui are in the barony of Duhallo. But the way the grading system is in Kerry, Guinea Guilla are actually the no one second now. They are the twenty fifth graded team in Kerry if you go by their championship structure. Yeah, I think that's about it. Whereas in Cork, Borbui will be the fifty third graded team, not because they're Borbui, but because they're the Cork Junior champions. So I'd imagine that Guinea Guilla, well, they are the favourites and every. I think there's been only, in recent past, not Nuri were the only team that uh, actually won this junior championship. So I, it's, these are interesting times and isn't it great times for these clubs to, you know, the shackles are off, they won a county championship and they can go in and enjoy a journey through Munster. And uh, moving to the soccer and again here, Numbers, Omicron, are casting huge shadows. We had a game cut off last night, Burnley and Brighton. Some Tuesday night's nice game between Manchester United and Brentford was called off. And how many, what's going to happen at the weekend, I'm not too sure. Tonight, um, two games that did they interest me for any other reason, but Leeds conceding seven goals to Manchester City. My God, the wheels have come off that wagon. And then last night, Arsenal had a 2 nil win over Everton. They're now fourth place, and that should keep their sizable falling uh, in this country happy. Or will it? Because there's a couple of people that follow Arsenal on social media. 
and how they're not managing Arsenal, Manchester United and Liverpool. It's beyond me. Their knowledge of where the mistakes are being made. It's frightening stuff. You know it's probably the same with all teams. Uh, all supporters. Tonight anyway, uh, Leicester play Spurs. We'll be interested to know how the Conte experiment is going. Chelsea, who will be ropey of late, should get over Everton, who will be very, very ropey. And uh, Liverpool and Newcastle, I suppose it can't happen, can it? Uh, no. So how did then, much point, to know something I'm kind of tempted to say is there much point talking about games because they may not even happen, but uh, the Man United Brighton game is in doubt. Uh, if everything goes ahead, Leeds and Arsenal be an interesting one from what I've said earlier on, and then Spurs uh, playing Liverpool. I presume, look, the Liverpool winning machine will continue. Rugby, and you remember last week we were telling you about the Champions Cup was co uh, commencing and that Munster, we were nearly led to believe, would have a team's hall, and, 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 and we did make the point that they were going to win at Wasps, and they did. Um, because of a combination of two things, they uh, two factors that the Munster players, those young players, uh, were excellent. Others like Patrick Campbell, the Nemo Rangers man, Scott Buckley from down the road there in, in Kinsale. He actually ended up as man of the match. Um, but anyways, it was, it was a great win and, and it was an incredible weekend for Irish rugby because all four provinces won on the opening day. I don't know, did that ever happen previously? So this weekend, um, there are again the second round matches are on and the virus numbers are impacting here uh, Ulster, uh, on Friday night there's two games Ulster playing Northampton that game is on in Ulster and I would imagine Ulster will win that Linster are supposed to go to Montpellier that game is in doubt and there are Covid cases in Linster there are also Covid cases in Montpellier and, and the rules are that if a match is called off oh, a, a team has to Obviously, concede the scoreline will be 28 nil. Could this be the first case? Is there a case of somebody blinking here? Because, you know, if Linster say that they can travel, they'll lose. But maybe Montpellier might have difficulty fielding a team as well. This could be the first time that both teams could lose a match by the same score. Keep an eye on it. Um, on Saturday, we have Munster West welcoming Cast to Thoman Park. And uh, you know, you have. Uh, you know, I'm not saying selection dilemmas, but a lot of the old cavalry will be back and the, the players that missed out of last weekend because of, of isolating. And um, I don't know how many of the new lads that were uh, brought, so, you know, the, the, that great win last Sunday, so that'll be another one. And then um, Connacht who, uh, had a great, you know, an excellent win as well last weekend. They travelled to Leicester uh, and that should be a challenge for them. Uh, in Munster during the week, their coach, Jon Van Gran, has decided that he gets an extra few bob by going to, uh, I think it's Bath in England, so he's going to be out the gap, and who replaces him? We well, maybe, that, uh, you know, maybe Munster rugby authorities will, after last weekend, might realise that homegrown talent uh, may be the answer, that surely at this stage in the development of Irish rugby, there are plenty of coaches capable besides hitting down so Pacific to bring up another South African to look after Munster, but anyway, that's their job. And a concern though for the IRFU during the week was, you know, this letter that was um, scripted and well scripted it was too, uh, on behalf of, I think it's 64 or 68, present and former uh, of Ireland win, win, women's rugby players, where they've been highly critical of structures within the IRFU and more tellingly, a lack of trust of the leadership of the RFU to, you know, to progress the game. And um, there was an Iraqi subcommittee. God, these fellas have some crack. These politicians, when they bring, they get their chance at being the self-righteous. But anyway, a number of them yesterday called for state aid to be withdrawn from the RFU until they get their house in order. And like sometimes these little things start off as minor little indiscretions, if you like, and all of a sudden, you know, like this is state funding. And if public opinion got behind it, this could be a problem for Irish rugby or indeed for any organisation that gets state funding when these, um, you know, when you're called to task. So hopefully that will be sorted in some shape or form. 
like it's winter time, Christmas time, and darts are a big sport. I don't know. I know I've had an arguments with gentlemen about, and ladies too, about darts as a sport. But the interest in darts uh, is growing. And you have the World Darts Championship. Uh, the PDC version began last night, and it continues right up right until the 3rd of, um, 3rd of February. It starts off, obviously, like, you know, there'll be... Um, the build-up will be slow to this. It's going to have a dedicated channel. And there'll be a lot of Irish people following this. Uh, the Sid Waddle Trophy is, is like the atmosphere at these darts matches. And it's kind of compelling viewing. And like, they're obviously, if you have you ever tried to throw the dart at the dart board? I mean, most of us wouldn't find the dart board. Like, you might think it's simple to look at it, try it sometime. Uh, Gerwin Price is, 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 the, is the reigning champion. He's a former rugby player, actually. So it's going to be interesting to know how you get on. But I'm just mentioning it that a lot of you will notice that our knowledge of darts hopefully will increase over the next few weeks. So that's it. Uh, the best of luck to those court teams that are taking part uh, at the weekend. Maybe we'd have all three winning. So until the next time, you mind yourself. Take care.